Welcome to the Infinity Process Portal Workflow Execution Walkthrough. In this video series, we will explore the new Workflow Execution user interface, its main business process management and document management functions, and highlight some of the new functionality introduced in IPP versions 5.1 and 5.2. In this video, we will find work assignments, explore a work list and customize it to our preference, activate an activity from the work list, open a process document and view the document content and metadata, and complete an activity. I'm going to log in to IPP as Kelly Wibble. Kelly is a sales agent who is working a loan approval process. Kelly has permissions to work most activities in the process but does not have administrator rights. So we enter the Kelly Wibble. Password. A successful login takes us to the workflow execution screen, which is the main work processing area in IPP. So where do we start? As a processor, how do I find the work that is assigned to me? Under my assignments, you will see the user account, Kelly Wibble, and the roles and organizations to which Kelly is associated. In this case, there is an organization called Corporation and a role named Sales Agent. Next to each of these is an item count. So there are six items directly assigned to Kelly Wibble, uh, no items assigned to the Corporation, and three items of sales assigned to the Sales Agent. I'm going to click the item next to Kelly Wibble. These will open the uh, work list which contains the items that are directly assigned to Kelly. The work list presents key information about each activity. This includes the name of the activity, the activity OID, the priority of each activity. Uh, the priority is indicated with different colored flags. The red indicates a high priority item. Uh, yellow indicates the activity is a medium priority. And the blue uh, it's a low priority. The descriptors column lists the data or tags that are used to uniquely identify the process or activity. In this case, the descriptors are the applicant's first and last name and the loan amount. Descriptors may be grouped into a single column as shown here, or each descriptor may be displayed in a separate column. I'll show you how to configure the second option shortly. Uh, the time that the activity was started, when it was last modified, its duration are all shown as are the last performer of the activity. Uh, the actions column contains icons for launching process details, um, delegating the activity, aborting the activity, uh, and viewing any notes that are associated with the uh, the process or uh, you can add new notes. Uh, we'll explore each of these actions later. The workflow table can be sorted and filtered on most columns. The yellow arrow next to a header indicates that the table is sorted on that column, in this case start time. Uh, you can click the column header to toggle between ascending and descending. Or you can click another column to sort on that column. So let's sort on the last modified column. Uh, the icon at the top of the header indicates that a filter can be set on that column. So in this case, let's set a filter on the activity name. I'm going to select Enter Loan Request, Apply Filter. Uh, the table is now filtered on the Enter Loan Request activity and it is sorted by last modified date time. To remove the filter, just click the filter icon again. So the work list is returned to its unfiltered state. Let's customize the table columns. So we click the column selector icon in the toolbar. This dialog allows me to select the columns to display in the table and reorder them to suit my own preference. As mentioned earlier, the descriptor columns can be shown in a single column or separately. So I want to configure 
uh, the table to hide the descriptors column and show the first name and last name columns in, uh, separately. So let's find descriptors. We'll mark the checkbox. So, well, we'll click it so that it's unmarked, so that it will be hidden. We will mark the first name and last name. Now let's drag these up under priority. To set the order, click the apply button. And here we see uh, the descriptors column has been removed, and it and instead we have uh, the first name and last name descriptors shown separately. Uh, the columns will remain as configured until you change them. I'm going to activate uh, an inner loan request activity now by clicking uh, the name of the activity. This is a manual activity where process data is entered, but before we fill out the form, uh, let's look at the documents associated with this process. So let's click the TIFF, open it in the TIFF viewer. Each document will open in the viewer configured for its MIME type. IPP ships with a TIFF viewer and a PDF viewer. Also, any documents um, supported by the browser will open in its configured viewer. Documents that are not supported uh, can be downloaded to the desktop and open in a desktop application. Uh, I'm going to click the Maximize button on the view to go full screen. Uh, the TIFF viewer has several viewing controls. By default, the zoom is enabled, so if I click anywhere in the document, I can scroll up and down. I can use the mouse button or the center wheel to zoom in and out. I can click again to return to the uh, to the viewer. Uh, there's a hand pan option, so I can move up and down. A best fit, uh, fit uh, to window, fit to height, a fixed size, and rotate it left, or right upside down, um, return to original orientation, uh, 90 degrees left, 90 degrees right, I can smooth the image, I can go negative, uh, if this were a multi-page TIFF I could also select the, uh, the page to view. Now that we've re reviewed the document content and the various toolbar options for viewing the content, let's take a look at the document met metadata. So I click Details. Um, here we have a description for the document, uh, the standard properties which include the document ID, uh, the file size, the author, uh, the create date and modification date, um, some additional information such as the MIME type, uh, and if any additional uh, metadata were defined on uh, the document type, uh, it would also appear here. Okay, so let's return to the document um, activity. Close the document. The inner loan request activity is the first step in a loan approval process. Uh, the screen is drawn by IPP UI from a structured data object associated with the activity in the model. So let's fill out the form. So first name Captain, last name Dave. He needs three thousand dollars. Skip the date of birth for now. address zip country um, we'll 
select a region and branch as well. Okay, so we filled out the form. So what do we do next? Well, we have several options. Uh, we can complete the activity, which will send it to the uh, the next step in in the process. We can suspend the activity, uh, which essentially keeps it in the same activity uh, that it's in now, which is the inner loan request. Um, also, if you choose this option. Um, the data that we've entered in the form will not be saved. Um, if you do want the data to be saved, but you don't want to advance the activity uh, in the workflow, you can choose the suspend and save option. Uh, in our case, we are ready uh, to complete this activity um, and send it to the next step in the process. So we'll click uh, complete. So here we see the loan request again. Um, it's now in the approved loan request activity and all the data that we entered in the previous step is displayed. Uh, this activity immediately opened because the account that we have logged in with, uh, Kelly Wibble, uh, is authorized to work both the previous activity, which was the loan, uh, inner loan request activity, um, and she's also authorized to work this activity. Uh, if the loan request had transitioned to an activity that the user, that, uh, the user was not authorized to work, the activity view would have simply closed and we would have to select another activity from the work list. This concludes video one in the workflow execution walkthrough series. We will continue processing this loan request and explore the chat and notes functions in the next video.